Hi everyone, welcome back to the IB Chemistry online class. Today we're going to discuss part 3 of stoichiometry relationships, gas stoichiometry. So a little bit of background of gases. These six laws, Boyle's law, Charles law, Gay-Lussac's law, Diver's law, Avogadro's law, and the known name law provide proportionality relationships and are what make up the more popular law known as the ideal gas law, which we represent as PV equals NRT. P represents pressure in kilopascals. V is volume in decimeter cubed. N is the number of moles. R is the universal gas constant as shown as 8.31 joules per Kelvin moles. And T is temperature in Kelvin. All right, let's look at an example that combines the ideal gas law with stoichiometry concepts. A methane gas sample that has a volume of 5.60 decimeter cube at 298 Kelvin and 330 kilopascal was mixed with a sample of oxygen gas that has a volume of 70.0 decimeter cube at 304 Kelvin and 250 kilopascal. The mixture was ignited to form CO2 and H2O. Calculate the volume of CO2 formed at a pressure of 500 kilopascals and a temperature of 398 Kelvin. All right, let's first break down the question so it's easier to understand. So, we start with methane gas, which is known as CH4. It has a pressure of 330 kilopascals, a volume of 5.60 decimeter cube, and a temperature of 298 Kelvin. Next is the oxygen gas which has a pressure of 250 kilopascals, a volume of 70.0 decimeter cube, and a temperature of 304 Kelvin. Finally, carbon dioxide, which is produced along with water, has a pressure of 500 kilopascals and a temperature of 398 Kelvin. The question is asking for the volume of CO2. So we will need to apply stoichiometry rules as well as the ideal gas law to determine this. So first, we write out the unbalanced equation as obtained from the question. For any chemical equation like this, the atoms on the left side must equal the atoms on the right side. And in this case, they are not. So. By balancing the molecules, we can equalize the atoms on the left and right sides of the chemical equation to obtain a balanced equation. Step 2. Here we have to find the limiting reactant, aka the reactant with a lower number of moles. Here's an easier way to understand this. Imagine you got four sugar and five milk, and you need one sugar and one milk to make one cake. The maximum number of cakes you can make is four. It doesn't matter if you have 10 milks or 50 milks or 100 milks or you get the point. <laughs> because we are limited by the amount of sugar to make cake, sugar is considered the limiting reactant. Now, likewise, we need to determine whether CH4 or O2 is considered a limiting reactant. So, by using the ideal gas law, we can determine the number of moles of methane, which is 0 0.746 moles, and oxygen gas, which is 3.46 moles. Since one mole of methane needs two moles of oxygen gas, we need to multiply by the mole ratio, which gives us 1.49 moles 
of O2. Now we see that since 1.49 moles of O2 is less than the available 3.46 moles, it is determined that oxygen is in excess, which therefore shows that CH4, methane, is the limiting reactant. Moving on to step 3, we now need to find the volume of CO2, which is what we are looking for in the question. So from the equation, we can see that one mole of CH4 produces one mole of CO2, which makes the convergence simple. Since the mole ratio is 1 to 1, we can assume that 0 0.746 moles of CH4 is equal to 0 0.746 moles of CO2. Now, to obtain the volume of CO2, we need to use the ideal gas law formula. Since conditions stated are not STP, we have to go through this process. With the moles of CO2 are constant and the pressure and temperature conditions given for CO2, we obtain a final volume of 4.93 decimeter cube. So our answer is B. Well done. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe and leave a comment down below if you have any questions or topics you want us to cover. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.